so what I wanted to talk about in this lecture actually is um, I want to talk about something else but since last time I talked about Walker's alias method and I didn't uh, you know I just started the discussion let me revisit the problem so <clears throat> remember that a lot of what we were doing in important sampling was to sample from an arbitrary distribution so given an array of numbers an array of n positive integers you had to sample i proportional to a i um, <clears throat> And you know, remember that we had the basic samplers, which were just doing binary search by on partial sums. So, the basic method would give you a preprocessing of O of n. So you take the array, you have O of n preprocessing, and then each sample is generated in O of log n. So to generate k samples, you need k log n. Um, then I told you about another method which essentially uh, it's somewhat simpler like you don't need to do binary search you just have to merge sorted arrays and now that's the same pre-processing but to choose k samples you need k log k plus n so that's a plus n over here which seem which makes this seemingly more efficient except this method is highly cache efficient because merging sorted arrays is extremely efficient and uh, what I will sketch out is Walker's alias method, um, which is a preprocessing of O of n, and the time per sample is actually just O of 1. So instead of you know writing it out in, in gory detail, let me draw a picture for you. And I think with the picture, things will be fairly clear. So if you look at the other methods, uh, so I'll say the other methods, Remember, we assume that we can access a uniform random number. And um, I, a technicality is in Walker's alias method. You Let's just assume you can generate a uniform at random number in 0, 1. So actually, it's assuming, it says almost assuming in, assume that you can generate a real number, or you can essentially generate like a 32-bit precision num number. Uh, between 0 and 1. Um, and, and so, you know, one of the issues with Walker's alias method is that, you know, computer precision is involved. Um, but, you know, we can come to that later. So in the other methods, a pictorial view of it is to say that, you know, you have to generate, let's just say that, you know, this is, uh, is a 0, this is a 1, this is a2, so on and so forth, to generate a uniform random number, that is to generate, I'm sorry, to generate i proportional to ai, you basically sample something uniform at random in this interval. So if you drop something uniform at random, then it gives you exactly the right probabilities. So you can think of these as sort of one-dimensional sampling right so you just sample a uniform random number here you represent your distribution in a sort of one-dimensional manner what Walker's method Walker's method is going to be what I'll call sort of a two-dimensional sampling <clears throat> so the best way to think of this is really to have an analogy with liquid so again, so um, let me not use, you know, let me just say that the numbers are 1 to n. So I have for each i in n, there is pi is the desired probability of sampling i right and so of course summation pi is equal to 1 so this is your distribution right this is the distribution that we wish to sample from I'm gonna think of this as I have these n buckets okay so this is corresponds to 1 2 up to n I have n buckets and each of these is going to have some amount of liquid in it.
right so n buckets each with liquid corresponding to the element what I mean is imagine that this liquid was labeled 1 and this liquid was labeled 2 this liquid is labeled n minus i and n and so we're going to assume that these are immiscible meaning that if you sort of it's like oil and water like if you pour oil on water they won't mix with each other so I'll just assume these are immiscible liquids and this is sort of the the best visual image to have and the height of this is p of 1 the height of this is p of 2 height of this is p of n so on and so forth does this make sense all right, so you have these n jars of liquid. You want to pick a jar, or uh, yeah, instead of pick a bucket, proportional, proportional to the amount of liquid in the bucket. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to start pouring one jar into another jar and kind of make things uniform. So we're going to actually start pouring one jar into another so that the amount of liquid in all the jars is going to be the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this. I'm going to start pouring jars into each other. I'm going to end up now with n jars with the following property. So n buckets, I should say, not jars, but buckets. So each bucket is going to have exactly the same height. So all the heights are going to be exactly equal to the average, which is 1 over n. So all of the heights are going to be 1 over n, except this is the height they will contain two different kinds of liquids right so I need to tell you this transformation which I will tell you shortly but what we're going to transform it to is that all buckets have 1 over n liquid that's the first property. Second property, each bucket has at most two different liquids. And remember, the liquids are numbered, right? So the liquid over here might be numbered 1, and this could be 5, and this, you know, might be 3, and that could be 10. It could be anything. It doesn't really you know this might not might have two it might not have two but you have these n jars they have each of them has exactly the same amount of liquid which is a total of one over n right because there are n jars and each bucket has at most two different kinds of liquid right and we assume they're sort of immiscible right so it's convenient to think of each of these now has a height so what you have for each jar is you have you will store this height. So I will refer to this as Q1, Q2, up to Qn, which is the height of one of the liquids. Yes? Uh, say uh, you consider bucket two from the first diagram that you drew. Yes. Say that has more than the average height that had initially. Yes. Before. Yes. Then how does that bucket look after this transformation? So it, it's a good question. You'll see that what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour some liquid from two into another jar. So I'm going, to do continue, I'm going to do a continuous sequence of pours to end up with such a configuration. I have not told you what the sequence of pours is, which I will tell you right, which I will tell you shortly. First, I want to show you what the final data structure looks like. 
Okay, so does this data structure make sense? So you have these n buckets, each of them has exactly the same amount of liquid, and each has just two kinds of liquid. So all you need to do for each bucket is to store these two names and to store the height of, let's say, one of them, the first one, whatever that is. Does this make sense? So this is your data structure now. Right, the data structure stores basically these buckets. Now given the data structure, how do you sample from this distribution now? How will you generate your final sample? Perfect, exactly, right? So sampling is really easy now. So let me just write this out. To sample, you know, pick a uniform at random bucket. Say you pick the ith bucket, right? Then you pick a uniform at random x from 0 to 1 over n, and if uh, x is less than qi, you output the first liquid label in bucket i, in bucket i, else output the second label. Right, so that's how you sample. So sampling is, is, is pretty easy. And this is clearly just O of 1. You just need to generate two random numbers. You need to generate two random numbers. Right, one to pick a bucket, then one to pick a height. So how are we going to actually construct these buckets? Okay, so sorry, let me just get my focus back in place. Okay, how are we going to generate the buckets? So here's the idea. So we will pour liquids into the different uh, into the different buckets at any stage there will be three kinds of buckets Okay, which I will draw them out here. So over here, these, which are the buckets that we will refer to as full. So full buckets all have a total liquid of exactly 1 over n, and they will have at most two different kinds of liquid. So this, in some sense, is the final configuration that you want. Right? This is sort of the final finalized buckets. Then you have a collection of buckets. Now all of these will only have one type of liquid. These will be under full. That means the liquid is less than 1 over n, only of one type. They only have liquid of one type. So if you have things that are under full, then you must have things that are over full. Over full. And here the liquid, as you expect, is going to be, um, yeah, let's just say it's strictly less than, strictly more than. Because here the liquid is equal to 1 over n and two types. This is only going to be one type, one type. Okay, so these are going to have more than 1 over n. These are all less than 1 over n, and these are all exactly 1 over n. Okay? <coughs> now, 
we will pick an underfill bucket and make it full. Okay, we'll pick an underfill bucket and we'll make it full. How will we do that? Pick an overfill overfill bucket, right? And keep pouring. So let me refer to this bucket as B, and I'll have an overfill bucket that I'll call C. So maybe this bucket is B, and this is C. Keep pouring from C to B until B is full. Right? So you take this and you keep pouring into that. So this has got some liquid here. This has got some liquid over there. And because C has more than 1 over N liquid, we do not need to pour anything more than C, more than C to make B full. Okay, so sorry, let me just zoom out a bit over here. Okay. Does that make sense? Because C has more than 1 over N liquid. It has more than what you need to get full. So obviously, you can pour from C into B so that it will be full, and you will not need to pour from any other bucket. So once you do this, this is going to become full now. So the number of full buckets has increased. This bucket might either stay over full or become under full. It doesn't matter. But then we have increased the number of full buckets by one. We keep repeating this process and we're done. And so this is Walker's alias method. And you know you can imagine the implementation obviously is not going to use liquid, but, uh, but it's just maintaining some numbers. And so this entire process, the full process, you only need O of n. Actually, you only need exactly n iterations. You need at most n iterations. And each iteration is a constant uh, is a constant operation. And so this is Walker's alias method. Any questions we about this? Run out of full buckets. Like the, the number of full buckets goes down by one. No, the keeps increasing. Sorry, sorry. I mean, uh, the number of overfull buckets will probably go down, and the number of underfull buckets. Might okay. Be so here's the here's the key. If there is an underfull bucket, there must be an overfull bucket, because the average is one over n. Okay. Yeah, but always, always. Exercise. Exercise. So the scribe proved this. If there is an underfull bucket. At any stage, there must be an overfull bucket. Why? Actually, let's discuss this. Why? The average, even without the full buckets, is still one over n. Exactly. Right? So it's just saying that if you have a collection of numbers, and there is one number that's more than average, then there is one number that's less than average. Right? In any collection of numbers. Okay, so so the scribe, please put in the proof of that exercise, and that will then resolve this this problem. So does this make sense? I have a question. Yes. So you first said that every bucket can have at most two types of liquid. Not initially. So uh, I yes I well I said at most. Okay. At most too. Sorry. 
because you might actually start off with some bucket being exactly full in which case you just keep it in the full like if it has, if it has one type of liquid and it's exact it's full then you keep it here so i should say at most two types okay pretty neat huh i mean this is a very very cute procedure uh and this is referred to as walker's alias method so that's a good question. I think the alias is because like you have these pointers from one bucket to another bucket, so it's like an alias for another. So in some sense, you're initially sampling from one to n, but then some of these n's will actually contain liquid from another bucket, so it's like an alias for the other bucket, the other type of liquid. Uh, and I believe that Walker's method was uh, was some probably in the 70s. Um, uh, there's a Wikipedia article on it. Uh, what is interesting is that, uh, you know, despite it being so nice and so elegant, uh, I have actually never seen this been taught in a course. So you're the, you're the, you guys are the lucky lucky ones. Um, <clears throat> uh, any questions?